In this devlog I'll remake the classic NES Mega Man in Unreal Engine 5. And I'll talk you through the process of how I managed to replicate his entire moveset, including the slide and charged buster shot, among other things. I believe that pixel art has a special charm that cannot be replicated with high poly 3D models, so even though I'm using Unreal Engine 5, I decided to not go for a realistic style, but instead opted for an HD 2D style in which I mix old school pixel art with Unreal Engine's advanced lighting and post processing to create a mix between the old and the new. The reason I started this project in the first place is that I've been struggling with getting better at pixel art for quite a while now, and I recently adopted a new method of drawing Mega Man sprite edits for practice, and finally things started to click. So I thought to myself, what if I take it to the next level and also draw animations for each of their special moves and actually put them inside of a game as a boss that Mega Man can fight. This means that I get to practice pixel art every day in a meaningful way, while also showing you more about my 2D game creation process with Unreal Engine. By the way, if you want to learn how to make 2D and 2D 3D hybrid games like these in Unreal Engine 5, you can check out the ultimate Unreal Engine 2D game development course I created through the link in the description. This 12 hour course will teach you all you need to know about Paper 2D and Paper ZD and will create 4 games that teach you about different aspects of making 2D games with Unreal Engine. This course is by far the best way to learn about 2D game creation with Unreal Engine, so make sure to get it from the discount link in the description to rapidly improve your Paper 2D skills. But before I could get into making the bosses from the pixel art I drew myself, I first had to recreate all of the base game mechanics and implement Mega Man as the player character, which this episode will mostly be about. Of course I first had to create a new Unreal Engine project, but instead of using the blank template I started from my custom 2D side scroller template. This has all of the correct project settings and a custom paper 2D character for reference and saved me about 30 minutes of setup time. I then imported the Mega Man sprite sheet using the JSON method that allows me to create all flipbooks with the click of a single button, which also was a huge time saver. Of course to set up my character blueprint and the animations of it, I'm using the free paper ZD plugin since it makes everything so much more streamlined. And even though at this point I've done this hundreds of times, the process of setting up a paper character blueprint up to the point where it becomes playable does take quite a while. I had to take care of setting the capsule size, enabling the enhanced input system, setting up the camera, adding the movement and jumping logic, enabling the character to turn, but luckily my template character allowed me to copy paste many things over and I could quickly move on to setting up the paper ZD animation blueprint. And at that point I had a playable Mega Man in the game that could run around and jump, which got me pretty pumped up. However, if you've ever played a Mega Man game, you can probably tell that the jump arc I have right now doesn't look anything like it does in the original Mega Man games. So from this point on I went into making the movement actually feel like it does in the old Mega Man games. The first issue is that in Unreal Engine the default jump is just a set height no matter how long you hold the button and you can't do short hops or long jumps. In Mega Man the jump height changes depending on how long you hold the button and gives you very precise control. On the character class there's a variable called jump max hold time and this will allow us to keep on adding velocity while the button is held. Right now this does enable me to have different jump heights, however the jump is still too high even if I let go right away. So I had to play around with the jump Z velocity and gravity on the character movement component a bit more. To get it feeling just right I busted out my Steam Deck and started up the Mega Man Legacy Collection to see how the jumps compare. It might not be 100% spot on, but it's close enough for now. One thing I noticed though is that the jump feels a lot smoother in the actual game and in Unreal Engine it feels like there's a small step and pause to it. So that's something I might need to do more research on in a later episode. The next adjustment that needed to be made to the jump was the air control. In Mega Man it seems like even in the air you still have just as much input on the direction you want to go as you have on the ground. I currently have air control set to 0.5 which means I only have about half of the control which I have on the ground, so all I had to do here was set it to 1.0. But even this alone was not enough. There is another variable on the character movement component called falling lateral friction and a pretty high value of about 50 seemed to be the right setting here. This basically sets how much resistance to lateral movement there is. If this value is low we have to fight against the sideways velocity we currently have, but if the value is high it'll allow us to just ignore it and move into our desired direction much faster. Another thing that bothered me was that if you keep on holding the spacebar you'll jump again and again every time you touch the ground. However in Mega Man you need to first let go of the button to be able to jump again. There's actually a really easy fix for this. On the jump input action instead of calling jump from triggered, which is the default, I just have to call it from started instead. And that's all it took to recreate Mega Man's iconic jump pretty accurately. For the next step I just wanted a change of scenery and set up a 2D3D hybrid scene with one of the maps from my library. 
Just dropping Mega Man into the scene already looked pretty cool, but I needed to change a few material settings to make him fit into the scene even better by receiving lights and shadows from the map and also casting shadows. When walking around now, this already looked a lot better and felt more dynamic. This map doesn't just have an inside area, which is a research facility, but also a dock for flying cars in a cyberpunk city. Now let's get into the shooting. I first prepared the projectile sprites and also a parent blueprint that's shared between the different projectile types. Making a sprite based projectile is actually really simple. All you need is a sphere collision, a flipbook and a projectile movement component. The charge shot is a bit more complicated though since it plays an initial animation when spawning and then just loops over two frames again and again. For something this simple though, it wouldn't make sense to create a paper ZD animation blueprint and I just handled the animation switching right inside of the blueprint using functions on the flipbook component. Next I had to handle Mega Man's shooting state for the animation and also take care of spawning the projectiles. In a lot of games, shooting is an animation with a beginning and an end that locks you in place. However, for Mega Man, it's more like a state. After firing a bullet, the shooting arm stays extended out and you can switch into walking and jumping while in that state as well. So it needs a different type of implementation from most other animations. I simply created a boolean called use shoot anim and after pressing the shoot button, I set that to true. After a one second delay, I then set it back to false. The idle, run and jump all have a version of them with the arm extended and shooting, so I can now use this variable to decide which of those animations to pick. The select anim by bool node of paper ZD makes this really simple. And now when I press the shoot button, you can see that the state is active for one second and I can seamlessly transition between the idle, running and jumping with the mega buster being held out. One second does feel a bit too long though, so to see how long it takes in Mega Man, I just took some video footage into my editing software to count the time. This would also let me know how long the different charging states for the projectiles take to come into effect. When looking at things frame by frame, it actually turns out that the bullets spawn one frame before the arm is even extended, which is quite interesting. The arm is extended for 20 frames at 60 FPS video footage, so that means it should be active for about one third of a second. And after setting that up, it did feel quite nice. Next, I had to actually spawn the projectile whenever the shoot button was being pressed. For the location to spawn, I created a socket, but sockets can be quite buggy and especially with these one frame only animations, it didn't end up working that well. So instead, I just used the scene component to create a set shoot position for ground and another one for airborne and matched that to the animation. This ended up being a lot more reliable and accurate for this case. Next on the menu was creating the charge shot ability. First, I cleaned up my logic for shooting so that I simply have a function that just lets me pick which projectile type to spawn. One great thing with the enhanced input action system is that it allows us to easily capture how long a button was being held and also when we let go of it. When using a print string, I can see how long we were charging, so I can use this number to determine if we get no shot at all, the partially charged shot or the fully charged shot when letting go of the button. Looking back at my recorded footage, it takes 50 frames for the partially charged shot and about 115 frames for the fully charged shot. Then I just had to plug in these values and decide which projectile to spawn based on how long the button was held. With the legacy input system, setting this up would have been a lot more annoying and time consuming. In the old Mega Man games, you can see his sprite flash while charging to indicate that the charge shot is ready. They achieved this by actually giving the outline and the sprite a different color during this state. However, since we have a lot of other methods at our disposal nowadays, I decided to actually make the material on the character flash. First, I migrated my custom material over from my beat'em up project, which allows me to add an emissive map to a sprite and also has the ability to make the entire sprite flash and light up. A white flash means that the partial charge is ready and an orange flash indicates the full charge. Now that I brought over my custom material, I could also easily adjust the emissiveness of my projectiles. There was one more thing regarding the shooting which needed to be implemented. In most Mega Man games, you can only have three regular projectiles active at a time and have to wait until they leave the screen or hit something in order to become able to shoot again. This applies to both the regular shot and the partially charged shot. However, a fully charged shot will prevent you from shooting completely until it leaves the screen or hits something. I was curious to see if this limitation changed in Mega Man 11 since that game was made for widescreen monitors. But it seems like the same limitations apply for the regular projectile and you can only have three on screen at a time. However, even after a fully charged shot, you can still shoot three regular projectiles and basically have four active projectiles at once. This time around though, the charged shot does have a proper recovery animation and you won't be able to shoot again right away. In my Unreal Engine game, I could just shoot infinite bullets and they also didn't disappear and stayed active forever, so I had to implement some of these limitations now. On my character, I created a variable with shot energy and set the default value to three. Then I could create a mapping where I could save how much each projectile type costs to use. 
After that I just had to make sure to subtract this from the shot energy when shooting, recover it when a bullet was destroyed and also check if we have enough energy before shooting. And yeah I do sometimes get min and max mixed up here. After messing around a bit with the collision settings and making sure that the projectile gets destroyed when hitting an object and recovers the shot energy, this was looking pretty good. However I still had to handle the case of them leaving the screen. There's a function called convert world location to screen location which could be used together with get viewport size to determine if something is on screen or not. When you look at the actor count in the scene you can see that the projectiles are now being destroyed once they leave the viewport. And that's all it took to recreate the shooting mechanics. Next up was sliding. Sliding was introduced in later Mega Man games and is a pretty standard affair. You can activate it by pressing jump while holding down and it will lock you into the slide animation that moves you forward a set distance. However there are two ways in which you can cancel the slide. Either by walking into the opposite direction or by jumping. So those are things I needed to keep in mind while implementing this. I actually already had a slide attack in my beat em up so I could just use the function I made for that as the base. Recently I also discovered an even better way of handling movement like this but I'm not quite done yet finalizing it and packaging it as a plugin so for now this will have to do. This basically forces the velocity to be a certain value on tick while the slide is active. This then just needed to be called when jump and down are pressed at the same time. And this was already working fine. However the values needed some more adjustments until it felt pretty good. Then I just had to take care of cancelling the slide in certain scenarios. I just overwrote the on walking off ledge function and reset the slide from here to cancel it when sliding off a platform. And then also just before executing a jump. Cancelling it when walking backward was a little bit more tricky though. On tick where we're sliding I have to check the current velocity and compare it to the movement input. If the velocity on x is greater than 0 this means we're sliding to the right. And if on top of that the movement input is less than 0 this means the player is pressing the opposite direction. The same thing then also had to be implemented for the other side and if either of those conditions were true the slide would be cancelled. Last but not least I had to also make sure to disallow shooting while sliding. Even though it did look pretty cool. To be able to set up the damage system I first had to put together a simple enemy. Here I pretty much just went through the same steps I did when I set up Mega Man. Making a blueprint and all of the paper ZD components that were necessary. So there isn't anything new to show you here about the process. What was new though is the way the enemy behaves. It's protected by a helmet and only shows its face once you're close. To handle this I created an enum of armor state and at the point of the nodes where I checked for collision with a projectile I implemented some branching logic based on this. If there is no armor state it just applies the damage and then destroys the projectile. If the state is blocked though it only destroys the projectile without applying damage. On the enemy I have a custom event that plays an animation override with the shoot animation. Since the face is exposed when the animation plays I then set the armor state to none and once the animation ends set it back to blocking. Then all that was left was making the enemy shoot projectiles. Since it shoots 3 bullets at once I simply made an array with the angle offsets and looped over them to get the correct rotation for spawning a projectile. Lastly I added an aggro range so that the enemy only tries to shoot when Mega Man is nearby. And now that there was an enemy that can shoot the player I could finally work on finalizing his health system. Here I was reusing a vitality actor component that I created before and just set Mega Man's health to 30 so he doesn't die on the first shot. The next thing I did was implement sprite flickering and invulnerability. I actually made a tutorial about this before and I'm just reusing my notes I created for that. Then when receiving damage and surviving I simply have to trigger that invincibility and the sprite flickering. Lastly I had to add the knockback animation and effect. For this I could simply reuse the logic I created for the slide but just had to make sure it goes in the opposite direction of where the player got hit from. And this kind of worked while being grounded, however when getting hit while being airborne it's a bit buggy. This is why I don't really like the velocity method, but it's good enough for now. And in terms of gameplay mechanics, this is pretty much it for now. However I still wanted to add a few particle effects and sound effects to spice things up a bit. And lastly I just put together a small section I can play through reusing the meshes that came from the map. I only had a couple of platforms and only one enemy type, but it was good enough to give a feel of what a finished game in this style would play like. Of course this isn't a perfect recreation of how Mega Man controls, but I think it's close enough and I really like how these sprites look together with the 3D backgrounds. Now that Mega Man and all of the base game systems were completed, I could finally start to get back into drawing my Street Fighter bosses and setting them up within the game. 
If you've been paying close attention, you might already notice that some of the video footage I used throughout this episode was from a small free game called Street Fighter X Mega Man, which was released about 10 years ago and gave me this idea in the first place. In this game, you can already face off against Street Fighter characters as bosses. However, what I'll do is pick different characters that weren't featured in this game and create my own take on them in the future episodes of the series. So make sure to subscribe to not miss that. Can you guess who the first boss is gonna be? As always, thanks to my amazing patrons.